Hello everyone, Curtis White here from the Cannondale CyclocrossWorld.com team. Happy New Year and welcome to the X2O Bad Commerce Trophy GP Sven Nice in Baal. And today's conditions are sunny, blue skies and a couple degrees above freezing, but precipitation over the previous days has made this track a bit muddy and slick and that has made this iconic and already heavy track more challenging. But this course is traditionally wet. Now we start in the street with houses on the left and the Sven Nice Cycling Center on the right. And you'll see very quickly that this is a very pedaling heavy course with the course basically going up and over this hill with some interesting turns, berms, whoops, and fun descents. And today I chose to run Challenge Limus tires at 1920 PSI. Now the start is a little chaotic with that hairpin right there, down this embankment, across this path, back up this embankment, and we're onto this very bumpy and pedaling heavy ground. And as we bend to the left just up ahead, it's a little bit firmer. And a lot of this course is just carrying momentum up and over the side of this hill. How can you limit using your brakes on these descents and managing your effort? So right now this seems a bit more dry, hard packed, not a lot of rolling resistance. In years past, they used to have a flyover right at the top of this hill going into this series of turns, but they decided to take that out over the last couple of years and they've added a couple more interesting sections. Now through the series of turns, there's a little rest through here after an intense start. But be careful as you have to adjust your line slightly and through a few of these turns as the ruts through the section have gotten very deep and bumpy over the years of racing on this track. Now as we bend to the right, we're heading by the pits and something unusual in cyclocross is we have a left sided pit here. And you'll see the mechanics standing course side throughout the race, but we'll see later on in the lap that pit two has a standard setup with the pits being on the right and both pits are going to be with the course going up the side of the hill so we don't have too much speed coming into them. So we're into this heavier mud section, dismount up this set of stairs. A lot of us have seen that really cool video of Thibaut Nice, the son of Sven Nice, riding up the side of those stairs. That's that iconic stair set. A lot of skill to do that, but this course is so heavy that you need to be really fresh to do a skill like that, and we just didn't have that. We're going so deep already from the gun at this point, you need to be more consistent with your efforts. So cross that slick concrete slab, Couple turns here. The line I preferred was bending a little bit more to the left, arcing this turn a little bit more and carrying that momentum up this hill. It was a little bit of a riser. Now this section is pretty neat in that there's a big pump track going down this hill. It's an opportunity to catch your breath, recompose, and the mud and ruts really add this really difficult element to it where it's just really slick and inconsistent where you just didn't know if the front wheel was gonna be going away from you or you didn't wanna catch too much air off these humps it was very easy to do. So over the last hump, bending to the left, try to carry your momentum. There's a rut there, you hold, hold into that. And then carry your momentum up the side of this hill. But a unique aspect to this course is that while it is a very pedaling heavy course, it's an easy course to break up with where to press on, where to lay down the power, and where to find a little time to recover. And you'll see that you need composure on a lot of these descents, like those pumps that we just fit, passed by there, or a couple of the descents coming up. But there's enough opportunity to catch your breath, regroup, and carry momentum into some of these more pedaling heavy sections. There we just saw a little hook to the left, a nice rut that you're able to carry momentum up that little riser, bending to the right, and we're on about a 15, 20 second descent down here. And you'll see that there's some bumpy sections here, and the mud is... There's a couple different types of mud on this course. You have some heavier mud sections where it's just it's a real diesel effort, low cadence power to get through it. And then you have this kind of Velcro to the tires, gritty, sandy mud that's really difficult to pedal through. And that really wears down the brake pads later on. But carry momentum up the side of the hill. This is one of the longer drags we have up the hill because it is a little slower. But I tried a couple lines here, riding up the left, riding up the right. It seemed like there was a hard packed under surface under that layer of mud right towards the middle and it moved a little bit more to the right where you could carry momentum around this bender to the left up towards the top of the hill but this is really just a diesel consistent effort that you had to really gauge right and you're doing this lap for the full hour it's really easy to overextend so really muscle in the bike here bends to the right this is one of the new features of the course that hasn't been in over the years past muscle in back up Right up we see Eli Izabi. He's back to racing, back from his injury. Really great to see him back on course. Down the side of the hill, bending to the left. This is a short little run up to get up. It's just too greasy and slick to really muscle the bike up and over. But 
this side of the hill is something that we haven't used or haven't raced on in years past. And this is a really interesting off camber that we'll see. And the approach is a little bit interesting where you want to look for that green traction patch around the outside, but there was a really nice rut forming right there. And I found success in starting low and cutting high where traditionally you want to start high and carry momentum down on an off camber, but you really wanted to carry your momentum in that maintain your traction with pedaling as far as you could and gain as much speed as you could. And I found more success starting low and cutting up high. So we're on this ripping descent. The course is really wide. I cut around that tree to try and arc this turn a little bit more into that rut, hit the brakes, 180 rut. Again, try to go tape to tape or fence to fence on this course. Another 180 turn, and we're really at the lowest point of this track and ball on the far side. We're at the furthest point from the start finish and the lowest point of this course. So up over this hump, we're about to get onto this pavement section and start to muscle the bike back up to speed. And as I just mentioned earlier, we were really at the furthest point away from the start finish and the lowest point of this course on the other side of the hill. So this pavement section, it's a couple hundred meters long, really brings us back up, all the way back up to the pits getting all our elevation back up to where we need to be at the top of the course. And this is the longest climb of this course and it really is a big effort that taxes the body and you really wanna gauge your effort right all the way through this. So as we start to approach pit two here, as I mentioned earlier, pit one was a reverse pit with the pits being on the left. Now this is a more standard pit. Both race lanes on both sides of the pit are going in the same direction up the side of this hill. There we see a Bawaza Trek rider going into the pits to adjust the tire pressure. Again, over the course of this pre-ride, I'll probably do three laps, communicate with the pit crew over those three laps, really dial in the pressure. We have different tires at our disposal. And again, I settled on 1920 PSI with the Limus tires. So this is really the high point of the course, up over the flyover. Earlier in the course, we went under it, up that staircase. Now we're starting to drop down. Mind that route on the left there. You don't want to be hitting that. And this is really a fast ascent, bending a little to the left. Chowder's a little Brit. We've been using this section of the course for many years. 180, it was faster to run that. And back up the side of the hill, we have to get back up to speed. But one thing you'll notice over the course of this track is that the course is built with wooden posts. And this is a permanent fixture here. And this is just how iconic Sven and this course are. So back up this climb, plenty of trees in the course. I've said this in multiple videos, but Trees in the course are a feature in a lot of these Belgian cyclocross races. It adds some character to it, but muscle on the bike up this mud, back up to the top of this course, dropping back down. You'll see some of these features are familiar if you saw the Slagum Ballenberg race earlier on this year when we were at the height of this pandemic and there were no events being held, but this was a social distance event being held up and down the side of this hill with little uh, competitions. But Back up the side of this hill, there are a couple different lines. You'll see some shrubberies on the in the middle of this course, but there's a riding line to the left. I was checking out this line a little bit more to the middle or on the right side of these shrubberies, but no one was really riding up all the way this side of the hill. This is a really challenging, thick, heavy part of this course. And again, we've gone up and down the side of this hill five or six times already by this point. So the efforts are in the legs. You're really trying to have a consistent effort here. And this is really the last big descent of this course, up and down that pump. Now we're into some heavier mud and we're gonna be bending to the left. Under that muddy layer, there are some really nice ruts. I'm gonna try this rut all the way to the outside. That's a really fast line and it sets you up really well for these next series of turns. Up and over this hump. And we're really almost level with the finish line at this point and we're within the final 90 seconds before the finish. So 180. This is the, that part of the course where there's that heavier, gritty, sandy mixture of mud that really wears down the brake pads, which is just it's part of cyclocross, part of the course. Mind the equipment, pay attention to it. Bending to the left here, some nice ruts. If you trust there's a rut for you on the outside, you can pedal through a lot of these sections and really minimize your use of the brakes. And in previous videos, I mentioned the difference of barriers between Super Prestige or the Bad Commerce Trophy. The Bad Commerce Trophy tends to run shorter barriers, but the barriers are much closer together today. They're about four meters apart, faster to run. We're right before the finish, turning onto the start finish straight. And that's the course. 
It's a real heavy pedaling track with a lot of elevation and mud with some technical features that are fun and plenty of character. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos through the course of this cyclocross season and share with your friends. You can visit curtisjwhite.com slash in the red for more content. Take care, stay healthy, keep riding, and we'll catch you next at the World Cup in Holst.